it's my favorite filter. You did y'all know why it's my favorite filter? Cause it's like it implies that you got love on your mind. You know what I'm saying? And what better could you be thinking about, yo, than hearts and love? I got I got other I got multiple hearts on my mind. You know what I'm saying? I'm full of love. I'm out here to get this shit out. This is another burning build. I don't know what day it is. I just know what city I'm in. Uh-huh. How about that? We're going to smoke this blunt. I'm going to let a couple people get live. Maybe I'll get somebody in here to talk to me. This is where conversation exists these days. In the future, there won't be interpersonal conversation. They're going to scare y'all. They don't, They put masks on y'all niggas and scare y'all into not going outside already. So you know that this is the safer space where you're going to be. I watched some kids virtually graduate today. And that shit was odd. I don't know what to think about that. The lady was like, and she was like, oh, you did so good, like, reading in front of everybody. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, in front of who? You read into a computer. Like, it, like but, but you know what I'm saying? It, it implies that there are so many layers to life to me. And, yo, I think when you acknowledge that there's multiple layers to life and you can humbly acknowledge, like, where you sit on a layer... You know what I'm saying? On a particular layer and understanding that other people may be layers above you or layers beneath you, you won't get mad at people so much, yo. Because it's really layers to like. This bitch really was like, yo, I'm proud of you. It takes a lot of anxiety to get up and speak in front of all these people, but physically, no one got up and spoke in front of anything. Furthermore, this bitch is in, in on the Zoom joint by herself with a mask on. Like, it just, it just shows, man, how just, you know, them, I don't want to get into talking about masks and shit, because I don't want them to pull my life um, for misinformation or no stupid shit like that. So we're not going to get into it. But what I'm saying is, this is the new future. You know what I mean? Like, the, I know my, my co-star said don't humble brag, so I ain't going to humble brag. I'll save that for another podcast time or some shit like that, but, you know, I ain't going to humble brag. <laughs> I got like three statements I want to make like a motherfucker But I ain't gonna do it Yeah I see Dolly Y'all like my dog You know what I'm saying I, don't, I practice what I preach man See he got his little money bag and shit You heard Niggas popping What's good Welcome Type it Yo if you coming into this right Cause you're the only one in here right now Come and type in Um Give me some questions and shit. Shit you want to see me ta- um, chop it up about. Go get you some G-Spot Lemonade. You know what I'm saying? www.gypsyclothes.net This will be on YouTube. So if you ain't watching it now, you'll be able to see it soon. Um, I did get some topics. I just um, screenshotted them shits. I think I did. Let me see. But yeah. I also... So, before I get into that, we start just basic shit. Because people see things, and they don't see the sweat equity that it takes to do things. So, I'll say, like, all right, you, if you're watching this right now, just know that before I decided to go live, I sent out about... And mind you, it's only two people in the live. So, this is, this is a, a testament to sweat equity. It's sweat equity. It's only two people in the live. But before I even went live, I sent out 50 personal messages to people's inboxes dms and text messages like yo hey i'm about to go live you know what i'm saying i'm a burning bill come chop it up with me um you could just be a part of the atmosphere if you don't want to give questions i appreciate you for being someone in my circle who i could comfortably reach out to and campaign for all of our upward development it was something along the lines of like they everybody got paragraphs like that now as y'all see this only like well y'all can't if you're on the live you can see you're on youtube you don't see the comments and shit but as you can see it's only three people in the live chat right now that's what they be meaning when they be saying like yo you got to perform for them empty houses before shit jump off you got to do all sort of shit and it's really just about you maintaining your momentum like you got to keep doing it you got to keep being consistent i had like six different podcasts now i don't be podcasting at all but it's easier for me to keep consistent with this live because this is legit just me talking to myself I don't have to edit the audio after. I don't have to like load it up to like different platforms. There's nothing else I have to really do after this except click save. 
go to YouTube and click upload. You know what I'm saying? And I, I guess podcasting is still easier. But I got a few theories on why I personally feel like um we are having like a super oversaturation of podcasts, which I welcome because that's how it's supposed to be. Motherfuckers have ideas and opinions. You're supposed to express them. The cream of the crop will always rise to the top. I have no fear about that. But I do have some ideas about why like some shit like they could be more successful you know what i'm saying and i think that it's 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 like a uh everybody's in a quick grab of trying to do something right now so it's like yo i'm trying to do this or i'm trying to do that because oh i just seen that they was doing it, it's working for them like, let me i want to try to do some shit too you know what i'm saying like everybody is on in a space of like they want attention but they don't know really what to do with it so like when they get it it's like what we end up getting is like content that ain't it for me personally um, and I think that I'm a visionary, though. I think I see ahead. So it's like, I can't wait to sit down with some of my favorite podcasters because I got some real good ideas. If you're watching this and you're, if you're one of my peoples, you know you're one of my peoples. Trust me, I got some good ideas for you. I promise. I got, I, I've been just, an, I've been just sitting back analyzing this podcast shit. And I figured, I feel like I figured out a few different things. So, like, fuck with me. All right, let me see. I'm going to get into some of this. See, let's see. Let me with some questions. Children these days regarding graduation, they worked hard as fuck. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? They did. Alright, hold on. So here's a we could jump into this topic. Yeah man. Let me see. Okay, let's check it out when you get a chance. That's cool. So my dog, my my my, my nigga, she always be coming with that pressure. <laughs> she just said I say yo, I need cause I needed a podcast topic for today. And she said the whole narcissistic behavior attracting empaths thing as a way to divide rather than treat the childhood traumas and take responsibility for how you are treated versus blaming someone who, too, deals with childhood traumas, codependency. Well, that's I think that was the first one Then she was saying she would let hear me talk about codependency, uh, people pleasing, hypervigilance and how it's just as, as narcissistic um, it's toxic. As narcissistic behavior, and she's tired of seeing it. Okay. She's sick of seeing this shit. She's also a fitness instructor, by the way, so she's, like, super motivated. She doesn't like, like, bullshit excuses. I feel like any excuse should be your reason to rise, rise above it because no excuse is ever good enough for anything, uh, even my own. So if I have excuse, yo, it's taking me a long time. I'm sorry, yo. I, in, in all reality, I, too, truly am a piece of shit and owe you better. And if you know me, demand that from me and I will meet that shit I have no problem like I pride myself on being the type of nigga that's like can be corrected you know what I'm saying I want the solution I want the solution so we can start with hypervigilance cause she says you know, say hyper, I'm hypervigilant I feel like my therapist told me that Um, not I feel like my therapist has told me that and I feel like due to my uh, mental acuity sharp i make that shit kind of work for me so it's like i observe every ubiquitous assimilation i observe everything everywhere all the time always taking in the information and i often take in information for other people you know what i'm saying i think for real for real that's the real the real issue of the, of the, of the codependency that come into being and i don't mean like codependency like oh uh, you a weak bitch because he pay all your bills or oh uh, you's a, a leeching ass nigga because you live in shorty house that ain't what i mean by codependency i mean the codependency that locks you into maintaining a narrative that doesn't serve you. Cause it's largely the people that we know keeping us locked into the people that we are not. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to get into tap into this? We can start getting it. Hey yo, I feel like a couple of my some of my favorite people jumped in. Please, if you got a topic you want to see me monologue on, like let me know. Give me some, give me some food before I get going. You know what I'm saying? We could, we could pregame our real shit. I think when people join them, like the lives, Instagram doesn't let me download them, so I can't load them up to YouTube. Or the last time I tried to, it, it wouldn't let me. But I'm also at Wi-Fi now, so it really actually might. It should, but um, yeah, that codependency is like. I think a lot of us, a lot of us, we perpetuate 
our own anguish and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like one way or another. You you be knowing, you be knowing what's reality, but reality be so daunting, it be so mm, what's the word? Intimidating. That you know what I'm saying, we'd all rather like create our own worlds. And I think that we gotta get back closer to like a baseline of reality. I get it, like it's you got your phone, your phone is a world unto itself. And, you know, everybody is, you know, uh, the center of their own universe. And we all live on one <clears throat> earth, but in different worlds and shit. I think we got to establish, especially maybe when I mean, that's what other cultures have. As a culture, we need to establish a baseline for reality. Like, what's real and what's not. Like, so much shit in our culture. Like, God, this shit is like, this shit bullshit. It's because there's so many residual effects of slavery and that shit. You can't get ahead because as you get ahead, the same people that's pushing you ahead are trained to pull you down. So it's like a lot of people you're going to meet and interact with. Like, say if you're a creative, I'm a creative. Um, I give away a lot of ideas. I have a lot of ideas that I watch be mimicked almost to a T within one season of me executing the idea. Whereas... Had I had uh, cooperation, the idea could have been bigger. So what we live in, we live in a culture that would have a bunch of many small successes. And a bunch of many individual successes as opposed to a large collective success, which could happen. I think the designers proved that with the boxes. I don't know another group of people in Springfield that ain't close friends already. Who have come together to generate money like that, a movement like that, um, an appreciation for their consumer base and customers like that. And um, yeah, I just haven't seen it. Not to say that it can't happen, but but I haven't seen it. So the collective is where the strength is found. I mean, you can take a stick, you can break that bitch. But if you take 10 of that same size stick and try to break it, you might have a little more trouble. You know what I'm saying? So I think we're in a culture that like really like and I don't know why. Why do we got so much pride in our negativity? Like, are the negative things that we could say? Like, the, the shit that we could say that's negative, we will say it with mad passion. You will say you hate a mother... Man, I can't stand that bitch. Man, I hate that nigga, man. Man, fuck them niggas, man. Man, damn, man. Don't nobody love me, man. Man, I ain't never had a dad, man. Damn, man, niggas killed my nigga, dog. Niggas, are everything negative, niggas will express that shit with extreme passion. I'm sick of this bitch, man. Yo, I'm tired of this. Yo, I'm tired of you. All that shit. Everybody would do all that with mad passion. Niggas approach positivity with mad fear. Walk out right now. If you watching this live, text somebody you love them. Just random. I love you. That's it. And watch how they respond to your ass. Nigga, they go, you gonna scare the fuck out of somebody you text them that shit. They gonna wonder what's up, what's what's wrong. If you randomly text a motherfucker right now, I love you, they gonna text you back, what's wrong? What's the matter? What happened? Cause we have normalized negativity. It's our space of being. It's it's the residual effect of slavery and shit. You gotta I don't know, dog. Like, I just think that, that shit is the weirdest shit, man. But it is. It exists. I'm one of the only people I know that see people will get happy for them like opposed to. I see people be... You ever see You ever see a group of friends? And, like, you might not be integrated into the inner inner circle of the friend circle. So, you know, it, it, it's they, they, they might be your friends, too. But they really they friends. And, you you know, you kind of outside. You ever see envy amongst them niggas? Or them bitches? It's like, damn, these are the people you chose to be like, I love you. Why are you afraid on eggshells, feel slighted by, always, you know what I'm saying? With these people. Why? They're the people you're supposed to be fucking with. And then you wonder why it's hard for them to show love to a stranger. They got shit. You can't, they can't show love to nobody. That shit feel like weakness to people. 
I don't know why kindness feel like weakness to people. Kindness feel like weakness to a motherfucker that want control. You know what I'm saying? Humility ain't nothing weak about humility. People think humility is weak, but it's actually the opposite. Because a humble person, yo, all right, say for instance, like a humble person know that they could whoop your ass or kill you. But they know it don't serve them to get into no fight. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you be like, yo, man, fuck you, nigga. And you, you handle it humbly like, yo, you got that. That's not weak to be like, you got that. Why is it weak? It, it, where would it be weak to be like, you got that? Nah, people watching. I can't let a nigga try me. Bro, you gonna spend the rest of your life in a penitentiary. Because you can't tell a nigga you got that shit. Let a nigga have that shit. Kill that nigga later. The fuck? Never express, like, never express negativity with passion. Why? If a nigga make you mad, man, you got way more issues. If a man could make you, if a nigga could, if another grown man could make you mad as a grown man, bro, and he ain't did, and he ain't violate your family or no shit like that in no way, your shorty or your, your, your people's in no real way, you just don't like this nigga, get some help. Get some motherfucking help, because you's a hater, dog. I used to be good with saying, nigga, try you bust his ass. But some wins is pirate victories. Nigga run up to you, he try you, you smack him. Y'all get to fighting, you get arrested. This is a loser. He's a loser. His life is going to be the same. He, ain't, he probably in and out of jail anyway. You had something to do today. What the fuck is wrong with you? You got to stay focused. You can't let these niggas trick you off the street. These niggas will trick you off the streets, boy. I don't even know how we turned into this conversation, but we're going to switch this shit up. I don't want to talk about the streets. The streets don't love nobody. They don't love nobody, man. Nobody. The streets eat everyone alive. <coughs> People be liking my posts when I put podcast topics, but they don't write a podcast topic underneath it. Help me out, y'all. Come on, y'all. Help a nigga out, players. Till I get in a good groove, I'm nice and high type shit. Ooh, yeah, my people's home. I can go get my computer. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion reportedly unfollows the baby on Instagram following his collaboration with Tory Lanez. Uh, okay. Y'all, why? Y'all care about celebrities more than y'all care about y'all community? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yes, y'all do. But this, but y'all interact with the other energy more. Celebrities are like the gods and shit. Man, God don't even fuck with you like that. You be talking to God, that nigga don't be saying shit back. Your brother right here begging for a conversation frame. You. you won't even talk to him. Why? You got an uncle that want. You got an aunt that wants some conversation with you. But you won't talk to her. why? She do drugs. So the fuck what? Nigga, I wouldn't give two fucks. You human, you got life. If you got positivity to contribute to my experience, I'm open to having a conversation and seeing what could become of that. If you ain't got that, then, you know, you ain't my type of person anyway. And just regular laws of nature and shit gonna dictate a separation. You know what I'm saying? So I never really fear being around the wrong people because anywhere I'm at, I'm near to do good. And so whoever's there could possibly, you know what I'm saying? Like, they could be super well richer than me, but I could be of service in some way. You know what I'm saying? And so I come and walk into every interaction, like, how can I be of service? And if you can't find a way to be of service, that kind of lets you know the type of interaction that you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, be smart about how you move. Be smart about how you move. Be smart about how you move. Y'all see my dog. It's like the best birthday gift I ever got. It's me. And he got this little chain on and shit. You know what I'm saying? His money back. He getting to the paper. We getting to the paper for the second half of the year. You heard? We doing spells on this shit. <laughs> we gonna get to the paper. With some money. You heard? We want some money. We want some money. We want some money. 
with some motherfucking money. I wish all y'all health, wealth, success, and the achievement of y'all fullest potentials if you watching this shit. If you watching this shit, just know I'm doing these shits, yo, because I be wanting to talk about what the fuck I be wanting to talk about. And I understand that typically I have to do some type of energy transmutation before I get the chance to talk about what I want to talk about with people. Because I'm so me that most of the people I know, when they get up with me, there's a vent session that occurs. You know what I'm saying? Like the 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 like, I'm a person. They feel like, oh, well, I can talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Or he gonna listen. You know what I'm saying? So they tell me, or he gonna, you know, what he gonna do. I can give him all the information of the situation. He gonna process that shit really fast and compress that shit down into one real simple, palatable solution, and practical, uh, uh step to take for me. We got to get through all of that before I can talk about space and aliens and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes those those conversations, those builds, those, uh, you know, therapy t- sessions, all that shit. That's sometimes, man, it's just take hours. And even in, then now your energy different. So it's like if I wake up and I'm feeling, uh, you know, I don't know, just motivated or thoughtful in just like a, a, a real spacey kind of way. Like I want to like my, my brain today is pondering the ponderings of my soul. You know what I'm saying? And then I walk into the world, you know what I'm saying? I go into my day and I, I start fucking with somebody and they're like, man, let me tell you, man, how this bitch done tried me. And you like, okay, now we, we now you went from pondering the ponderings of your soul into a high ass frequency to now you talking to somebody who who done been tried by somebody else. So this is a way lower frequency. Energy gonna always balance itself out. So you gonna lose part of your divinity in that moment that you divulge or dive into a lower frequency interpersonal relationship or interaction. That's a form of starving your soul. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be hungry later. And you ain't going to know why. But it's going to be because you spent so much time within the social circuit of remedial marathons, motherfucker. You're going to feel stupid. Y'all ever dealt with somebody or something or or someone or some organization or just been a part of some shit, whether it was, I don't know, drugs, streets, friends, lovers, any of that shit, and then you start feeling stupid? Man, that's because you in the wrong frequency. It ain't necessarily because you're stupid. It ain't necessarily even because they intend to make you look stupid or intend to play you or intend to none of that shit. Nigga, you just in the wrong frequency. And your body telling you, like, nigga, this the wrong frequency fuck you doing over here with these people and they all yelling and commiserating over cheap looking for it. Like, the fuck? Got that word from a man. Hey, hey, I had to look that up when that nigga said that shit. That nigga said commiserate. I said, what the fuck do that mean? Oh, these niggas is trauma bonding. I get it. Over cheap liquor. Hell the fuck yeah, niggas do. Niggas get a $40 bottle like it's a victory. And trauma bond the fuck out that shit. <coughs> get drunk and talk about problems and shit. Our culture corny, yo. <laughs> we need a new culture, yo. We need to invent a new culture. We got to reshape this thing. Because this shit is destructive. It got everybody feeling silently desperate, alone. And, and and reactive. That shit ain't cool. There gotta be better ways to be, you know? <coughs> gotta be better ways to be. Just gotta be. Oh, wait. So I ain't never tap in on the topic. Narcissistic behavior. Everybody's a narcissist, man. Our culture don't do nothing but breed narcissists, Jay. We think she's gonna watch this later. <laughs> Everybody's a fucking narcissist, man. Every the, show me a person you know that don't have a main character complex. I'll wait. I put the motherfucking filter on so you know that my phone ain't broke when I just shut up like Dorsey do it. Just look at y'all. Nah, it ain't broke. <laughs> I love when she does that shit. Nah, it ain't broke. 
she's a master. She's a genius. She's a genius. I watched her see her phone do that and then find a way to spin that into something that's a marketing technique that works wonders for her because now it's a part of her pitch where she just freezes. And then goes, nah, it ain't broke. I'm just letting it sink in. Oh, man, she's incredible. Y'all go follow and watch Love Dorsey, man. Y'all doing all right. She's dope. Watch some Love Dorsey with your girl. That's how you test your relationship. You got to be secure in yourself, boy, to watch some Dorsey. That bitch will have you looking at your partner like, man. <laughs> have you looking at yourself like, man. You know what I'm saying? Follow fuck with Dorsey, man. But yeah, so see, what happens is everybody had these main character complexes, so all their interpersonal relationships exist only on the lowest frequency. It's one of a need met. You know what I'm saying? And usually that's attention. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has a need for attention. Children have needs for attention. You don't give a child att- attention, they'll die. You know what I'm saying? Literally. And figuratively. Um, that's why I look at everybody like the, they, they've grown into like overgrown children because... The, the child in them that was supposed to continue maturing died and stayed and froze at that age right there. So you talking to somebody and yeah, they're 28 years on this earth alive, but they're fucking 12 in their mentality. You know what I'm saying? And it's frustrating when, you know what I'm saying? Like you're attempting to uh, bond or, or build and y'all have that kind of shit going on. So it's like, y'all got to get on the same page. I got to communicate, communicate, communicate. Like Dorsey be preaching. I'm also one of them niggas that I feel like I don't have a main character complex. So I don't have a problem praising people where I feel like it's due. You know what I'm saying? And I never have a problem giving homage to where I feel like I either got direct knowledge or inspiration or a thoughtfulness that led me to a knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to always say, as far as like me doing lives and shit, like I hope I one day get to fuck with uh, Dorsey and Pops. I'd love to burn an L with them and shit. You know what I'm saying? I would love to motherfucking um, build with someone in that way that already does what I'm doing on such a higher level. I would be asking mad questions, yo. Like, how to do this? How to do that? Like, I don't know, man. Y'all are too proud to be like students. You know what I'm saying? That shit is like a main character complex that will play you out, yo. That shit ain't like It's whack When you enter into a situation That's what I be meaning When I be saying like Yo When you walk into a room Like look at the room And see how you could be of service That instantly puts you In a support and actor's position But guess what Support and actors Is like Yo man I don't give a fuck Nigga Anybody like English Supporting actors Is what make the fucking story Supporting actors Is what make the story The main character Has no story Without the supporting cast so get in, get in on cash, mother man. Shit, I be, I be coming in the rooms. I be down to be the coffee guy. Y'all need somebody to go to the store, get some coffee. You know what I'm saying whatever, nigga. Like I, I'm with whatever's gonna push the production forward. And the more personal, I'm with whatever's gonna push the community forward. So like, you know what I'm saying, man. I get with a lot of. Oh, that's humble bragging. Damn. Listening to Coastal, I'm not gonna tell y'all what I've done. <laughs> Even though we mentioned it, that is a form. Of, ah, that's fucking weird how that's like that, right? Sometimes some shit is inescapable, yo. Oh, no. But yeah, everyone's a narcissist. Mm. All right. The whole narcissistic behavior attract the impasse thing is a way to divide. So I wonder if she's meaning that they're, uh, the narcissists and the empaths, like people are drawing a dividing line between the two by saying that and then like keeping them separated by like pitching that like they shouldn't be together. I don't really know. I would love to ask her exactly what she meant by that. Um, but I do know that narcissists and empaths, you know what I'm saying? They tend to click opposites attract and shit. You know what I'm saying? Especially our culture. Can y'all hear me? I noticed that sometimes when it says my um battery's about to die and then I click it Again, people can't hear me. So can y'all hear me? If y'all can hear me, say yeah. Give me a thumbs up or some shit. A like button or some shit. (laughs) Alright, cool. So yeah, you got motherfucking... They be attracting each other. So it's like niggas be trauma by Everybody be trauma bonding. So the, the narcissist loves the empath... 
because they got someone to abuse and feel more powerful than. And they, you know what I'm saying? It's all like a power, it's a power chase. Like, you know what I'm saying? It makes them the top of their personal dominance hierarchy, at least with this individual. So the narcissist loves an empath. And an empath love a narcissist because empaths in our culture traditionally have been through so much trauma, their story is pain. And your, your ego is going to want to complain to fuel and feed itself and keep that story going because the strongest need in the human existence is to stay consistent with the idea it has of itself. So most of the empaths that I know are yet yeah, empaths, but they're also fucking victims. Like, is some you know, this happened and all oh, this happened and you know what I'm saying? And they, they felt it coming and all that shit, but they ain't get their stupid ass out the way. So they love a narcissist because now an empath got somebody to blame. A narcissist removes the responsibility from an empath. Now they could just go and go through their typical empath story because most ninety percent of the empaths I know got a like they telling you about they empath being used in a way that it's like it was negatively affecting them. Like yo, man, I was feeling all the pain from everyone around me, and it's like. Maybe you shouldn't be around people, motherfucker. Like, maybe you need to do some. You need to do some soul development where you got some boundaries going on. Where where other people pain come in, you could take it in and process it, or you don't take it in at all. Because if you take it in and you holding it and you becoming the embodiment of more, like you're becoming the vessel for dead. You're becoming the vessel for horrible secrets and all sort of shit, nigga. You ain't gonna be able to be proud of yourself any fucking way. So it's like, nigga, I don't know. That empath shit, that shit a dub. I know mad people that's like, yo, I'm an empath. Nigga, I wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> people be telling me about, yo, I sat with my dad. I, I met my dad, yo, I, I only seen this nigga four times in my whole life. I ain't meet him till I was 29, right? Yeah, I know I look younger, right? That girl told me that the other day. I told her how old I was, that shit. Like, and I genuinely saw, like, the shot go on her face. Like, what the fuck? Like, and I was like, damn, you really fucking with them niggas that do drugs and shit. Them young boys do drugs, and they all looking 40. You know what I mean? That shit is wild. You heard? But, um, damn, I lost some chance. <laughs> Yo, the impact. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be you that easy. But I know that I'm an impact, but I use it in a positive way. I'm going to feed off of all the love. I'm going to feed off of all the hope in the room. Because everybody in the room got hopes. They just too afraid to voice them. They'll walk in the room and won't say nothing hopeful. Because they in the habitual habit of being the most cynical motherfucker around. And they recognize that as being something that's dominating and powerful. So it's like all the people they look up to are kind of assholes. So it's like, I'm going to be an asshole too. They don't have examples of success that's happy. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, they just hope the money took the pay anyway. But everybody dying and going to jail, it's impossible. It's impossible. Only way the money can take the pay away is if y'all all move. And you don't care about who get left behind. That's the only way. It's the only way. If you care about who get left behind, they go to pain. And we all care. And you can't take everybody. So the pain is everlasting. Wanting the pain to go away is an illusion. Pain is the baseline of reality. It's the only thing people won't deny. A motherfucker could love you. Know they love you. Fantasize about their love for you. Y'all be in a room full of people and you go, yo, I love you, y'all. And they won't even say it back to you. Even though it's their truth. It could be their truth. They afraid. They'll deny that love. People will deny your love, yo. People will deny your love. They will deny their own love. You know what people won't deny? That motherfucking pain. Shoot a motherfucker. Stab a motherfucker. Smack a motherfucker. Mistreat. Drag a motherfucker into the ground. Mistreat a motherfucker. And watch with the passion that they tell you that that shit occurred to them. Watch how watch how hard they go to be like, yo, man, that shit hurt, man. That motherfucker, yo, man, yo, she did me dirty, God, man. She did me dirty, man. That shit hurt. But when she was doing them love, he wasn't he wasn't talking about the love, though. What about the love, dog? 
What about the love she was doing, man? You wouldn't even praise that woman. You wouldn't give that woman no kind of public recognition. But as soon as y'all fall out, you're going to give her all the public recognition that you can muster. You're a fucking weirdo. We got a culture full of fucking weirdos. This is what everybody do to each other. The motherfucker you love. The motherfucker whose dick you was sucking, bitch. Nigga, this the bitch who pussy you was just eating, bruh. You just ate this pussy yesterday. You just ate the pussy yesterday. And because of some verbal shit she said to you out her mouth, your narcissistic ass lost your composure and has to feel the need to institute your peak at the dominance hierarchy in a public setting like a motherfucking Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or Snapchat. And talk about quote-unquote women. Nigga. Anytime you make a post that says women or niggas or any blanketed shit, everybody you know immediately attaches the post to who they think you're fucking. So if they think you're fucking three people, they're like, he talk about one of the three bitches. Or she talk about one of the three niggas. If they think you fucking, like, this is the world. And then you create a game for the whole outside world that is against your inside world that or whatever you're trying to build. If that ain't narcissistic and empathic self-sabotage, I don't know what the fuck is. And everybody I know do that shit. Not everybody, but the large majority of people. How could you ever hope to possess anything happy? You can't. That's just the real truth. Now we're in the baseline of reality of pain. Yeah, that's what niggas won't deny. You know you ain't gonna have shit that way. It's a form of self-sabotage. You're bringing yourself back to a place where you're familiar because that's where you're comfortable. Somewhere you're uncomfortable is scary. It's scary. It's scary to a nigga. It's scary to a nigga to know a bitch saying some wild shit. I just nigga, nigga, you know a bitch get mad at you, nigga. She been done fucked around, looked at you, called you broke, told you she was gonna fuck your homie who got more money than you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got to be secure in yourself, boy. That shit right there. That shit might make you fall out with your bitch and your homie. You be like, yo, homie, you ever tried my girl? <laughs> yo, you got to know who you is, man. You got to know who you is. That shit get deep. Because that pain, it only get deeper. Motherfuckers got a limit on how much love they gonna show. How much love they gonna give. Motherfucker... You know, you know, we got all. You got a limit. You got limits. Like so, like the the crackhead walk up to your car, like man, you got some change and spend. You you never give them all the money in your pocket. You never do that. You never do that. I've done that, but we ain't talking about me. That's not. I'm not supposed to be humble bragging. <laughs> be like, you really get any all the money? I only had three dollars. <laughs> He like, yo, you get that nigga that shit. But what I'm saying is, everybody got a cap on the love that they'll show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I give you a ride, but I ain't gonna bring you to my crib. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't doing that. It's a cap on the love we'll show. But ain't no limit on the hate. It ain't no limit, boy. Your brain will just go and go and go. And it'll fantasize. It'll, man. Oh, man. When girls, yo, y'all ever have y'all ever have girls tell y'all about like the shit that niggas be saying? <laughs> they want to happen to y'all and shit. And that shit be bugged out. Do you be looking at this bitch and you thinking too like, well, if this nigga actually had bread, he could pay this bitch to let me. <laughs> oh man, this shit get deep. Coop, what's good, Coop? That's my man right there, the guard Coop, man. Yo, listen, man. Y'all don't, if y'all don't already, on all streaming platforms, I mean, not all streaming platforms, them too, because the niggas make music. Um, Go follow Loom Blue, Loom Blue 777. You know what I mean? On Instagram, Facebook, all of that. It's a clothing brand. I think they have the, um, I think they have the most composite, you know what I'm saying, uh, brand with an identity their brand really got an identity um i love it i love it i love it it's it's very who they are it's very niche and i think that that's where the future is in niche in niche marketing you know what i'm saying so it's like they're gonna catch the proper people and then people that they catch is gonna love them to death um 
horror culture. You like scary movies? You'll love Loom Blue shit. You know what I'm saying? You shop at Spencer's and shit? You'll love Loom Blue shit. You know what I'm saying? You want yo, hey, listen, you one of them you one of them black girls that look like she just in the hot combed her shit and your hair just like hanging and you go to hot topic and shit. You'll love Loom Blue shit. <laughs> But also, like, if you a hood nigga, you a love Loom Blue shit. Like, it's like, I, it's some Loom Blue shit that's fire. I love it my own self. So, like, I don't know, man. You just got to fuck with it. You know what I mean? Chop it up, man. Loom Blue, Loom Blue. See what I'm saying? That wasn't hard at all. But it was all very true. It was all from the heart. But it wasn't about me. You know what I'm saying? You got to do away with that main character complex, yo. That shit is like killing everything you love. I promise. That shit killing your kids. That shit killing your your parents, your friendships, your romances. Everybody. And that's everybody. I'm talking about everybody. This is not specific to one particular person or nothing to do with my personal life because I'm actually having a swell day. Um, but it's just something that I just culturally, I just observed this shit, man. I be just making a... Like nine, like when they like the teacher nineteen keys and say, man, I make a high level observations, and it's just like, damn man, motherfuckers got a main character complex. You start telling, you tell the motherfucker, yo man, damn, yo, I just got hit by a car. I just got in a car accident. They immediately then they go, yo, damn word, I got hit by a car accident like two weeks, like nigga. I'm talking about what's going on right now. You talking about two weeks ago, making it about taking the same situation and making it about that's that's a main character complex. Now, sometimes you catch those empaths who they're attempting to connect with you by letting you know, like, yo, I got, I, you be like, damn, man, she broke my heart. Yeah, man, my bitch did me like that, too. That's not necessarily the main character complex. And this is when you have to operate your discernment, because sometimes that's empathic connection. That's, damn, she did me dirty. I, too, know what it's like to be done dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, too, know what it's like to be thirsty. You know what I mean? And so... There, there is a difference, but the difference is usually in how it feels, especially when you say it or when you're cut off or when like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever's going on now, when any of these situations, especially when you enter in domain situations, like you enter in group situations like a classroom or, or, or organization or anything like that, what y'all must do is establish the dominance hierarchy and peck in order. But I think that that shit should be communicated. Niggas are scared to communicate about definite lines and definition because then it holds definite lines and definite responsibility. If you say, I'm the boss, nigga, then it's your job to make sure everybody get paid. I don't want to say I'm the boss. But a nigga don't want to be the worker, neither. Because if it's your worker, it's your job to take them orders. Damn, my shit finna die. All right, so hold on. They be doing that thing sometimes where you can't hear me. So I'm asking y'all, can you hear me? <laughs> I know last time I went on a crazy rant and then nobody could hear it. So if you can hear me, press a thumbs up or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Give me some, let me know you can hear me. Give me a little like, hit the like button or some shit. Somebody type in the website in the, in the comments. I could pin it to the, uh, to the joint. www.gypsyclothes.net. Go check that out. How about that? Alright, so you can hear me, that's cool. Fucking I lost my train of thought again, bro. Dolly, I ain't gonna forget this shit. Alright. Anyway. Let's see. Where we at? Where have we here? Take responsibility versus how you treat it versus blaming someone who too deals with child We all got child trauma. Everybody got child trauma. That shit overrated. I feel like by the time you motherfucking 11 or 12, you should be kind of over the idea that don't nobody love you or give a fuck about you or understand you. That should be clear. Because you should be able to look around and look at the people and see that don't nobody love or give a fuck or understand them neither. You see people around you getting done dirty as a kid all the time. Thank you for posting that. Let me see if I can pin this shit. I ain't never know how to do it. Boom. Pin the comment. That's amazing. Look at that. Would you look at that? That's amazing. Amazing. My Loon Blue niggas put me on to that nigga. He's hilarious. And he ugly as fuck. That nigga ugly as shit. But he got caught in a house fire. Yo. Tune in to my live if you on Twitter. Tune in live. At one gypsy comments. Let's 
much y'all want to hear me talk about. Um, anyway. So. Alright. We got dead air going on. Oh, shit. I need to go get my computer. Soldier Boy goes off. Soldier Boy tripping on social media again. Soldier Boy, I did again. <laughs> Yo, it's been real. My blunt's gone. I don't even know why I'm still on here with y'all. Hey, yo, be blessed. If you relate, we related. Uh, wish y'all all health, wealth, success, and achievement of y'all fullest potentials, you right? <laughs>